Hey, welcome to worshiptutorials.com. I received in the mail today this Squire Classic Vibe 60s Strat. I have to say, for $399, my initial impressions are that I'm impressed. But there's one thing that I do to every single guitar that I ever get, whether it's a couple hundred dollars or several thousand dollars or more, and that is a full-on setup of every guitar. This guitar needs one, although I have to say it it's set up pretty well, straight from the factory. So good job Fender slash Squire. This thing is really playable, but I can tell immediately there are a few things that I need to do that will make it better. Another thing that uh, I will often do on guitars, especially if they're not like super high-end guitars, I will file over and round over these ends of these frets polish the frets, make them super smooth, uh, so it feels like, you know, you're on glass. This right now feels a little bit like sandpaper. Uh, and then uh, whatever else needs to be done, conditioning the fretboard maybe, this one looks like it might need it. It's a little dry. So we're gonna go through the whole process in this video. I've had a lot of requests that I do this. I do have linked below a course, it's completely free a setup course where uh, I go through a setup on a Telecaster. This is a little different because it will involve a tremolo and we are going to tweak the tremolo because I don't like the way that it's set up from the factory. Of course, it's all a preference thing. So this video might be a little long. Timestamps are below. I also have multiple cameras. Look, we got A cam, B cam. We got Sky cam, hello, up there. And, and I'm gonna walk through this whole process and there is a process that I think you should follow. Now I'm not like a luthier, it's not what I do, but I have done tons of setups on tons of guitars. Uh, it's sort of a passion for me. I love doing setups on guitars uh, and making them play their best. So timestamps are below to go to the different sections, but you need to do this in order. So the first thing we are gonna do, the first thing that you should do on a setup is set the correct neck relief. So on a guitar, uh, the strings are pulling, you know, there's all this tension pulling back. You want there to be a little bit of what they call relief. You don't want it perfectly straight because you'll get some fret buzz here and there on the higher frets, especially unless you have a high action, which I don't want to have on my guitar. So you want there to be a bit of relief. You need a couple tools to do this, I'll show you right now. So the first thing you want to do when you set relief is you need a straight edge. So we're gonna create a straight edge with the string. To do this, you put a capo on the first fret, so now there is the string is anchored on the first fret, and then you fret it. You can fret on the last fret or kind of where the body meets the neck, but what if you fret on the, the first fret and the last fret, your string creates a straight edge, and then you can measure the relief underneath the string. So I like to measure this at the seventh fret. Another tool has magically appeared. This is an automotive feeler gauge. I got this at like an O'Reilly Auto Parts or something. Basically what you need to measure is 12 thousandths of an inch. Some people like 10 thousandths of an inch. That would be less relief, a straighter neck. The more uh, space beneath the string and the seventh fret, the more relief you know there is. Uh, I like 12 thousandths of an inch. So. Uh, basically what this is, is just a little, a set of metal um, gauges, and this is 12 thousandths of an inch thick. You can also think of it as like a standard business card, it is roughly the same. Uh, some people use picks, you know, to, to measure that. Um, you have to, this is a pretty thin pick. But, so what you do is, you fret the first fret, you fret the last fret, and you slide your feeler gauge in under the seventh fret. And if it clears, this is pretty much perfect, which is nice. Um, actually, yeah, I'm not gonna change that at all. That's just about right. Uh, so what you would do if you needed to make an adjustment, you would adjust the truss rod. And if the neck has too much relief, like if you slid this under there and there was lots of room, uh, and it, you know, it was like a little sloppy, you would tighten your truss rod, tighten to the right, uh, righty tighty. If it uh, was too tight and you needed to make an adjustment, if there was not any room, like if the string is sitting on the fret, you would loosen your truss rod. Um, and you know, you can make minor adjustments while the neck is under tension, but I, it's not something that would be recommended. I'm going to just 
see how the truss rod moves. Sometimes you'll find that the truss rod is all the way tightened uh, and, and it, you want it to be somewhere in the middle. You want like room to go either way because over time, especially as seasons change or if you move to different locations or travel with the guitar, the weather will have an effect on the neck and it will cause things to move a little bit. So you'll need to make these adjustments. I recommend checking your uh, neck relief maybe every season, every three months, every quarter. Uh, so you do it four times a year. Um, just to see where it is. And if it needs a little tweak, you can tweak it. But uh, I've seen a lot of people say like, oh, you need to tighten your truss rod if the action's too high. Not necessarily. You need to tighten your truss rod if there is too much relief in your neck. You need to loosen it if there is too little relief in your neck. And it has nothing to do with how high the strings are set from the, uh, the fretboard that you can do on the saddles. All right, I'm gonna adjust the, uh, the truss rod just a bit just to see how easily it moves because I'm curious uh, with this as a budget level guitar, I have a feeling it's gonna be just fine. So typically when you buy a guitar, you will get uh, some tools. The, this large truss rod is in for the neck. The smaller, not truss rod, this is an Allen wrench. The smaller Allen wrench or hex key uh, adjusts the bridge saddles. I also put the screws in this little baggie so I wouldn't lose them that came off. Uh, there was a plate back here. If you have a Strat, you might have a plate back here. I took mine off because I know I'm going to be adjusting this stuff. All right, so I'm going to take this uh, hex key. I'm going to move the truss rod just to see how it does. I'm going to leave the strings at tension. I'm not going to be moving this much. Typically when you move a uh, truss rod, if you're just going to move it, you want to loosen it first. Don't tighten um, because <clears throat> especially under tension because you don't know what it's at. It's easier to loosen than tighten. That moves very smooth. So uh, there's a lot of room here to go either direction if I need to make an adjustment. But like I said, this thing was, was pretty good. I'll do one more quick check now that I've got the, uh, the Allen key uh, in there and see where we're at, 12 thousandths of an inch, uh, seventh fret underneath the string, Pretty much perfect. If anything, it could go a little tighter to give it a little more. Uh, I said tighten was this way. It's actually this way. All right, to give it just a just a little bit less relief. And this truss rod is moving really easily, um, so no issues. That's perfect. And then as you change that relief, so if you tighten it, your your you know your fretboard is your strings are going to get sharper because they're being stretched further so you just want to keep and i barely moved it so my strings are i, I just have a, a shark tuner up here or snark snark shark i don't know whatever it is. a little uh you know tuner that goes on the headstock yeah see these all went a little sharp um and if the other thing is when you change your strings if you put on a heavier gauge of strings, the, there's more tension on the neck. It'll bring in more relief. So you may need to uh, tighten your uh, truss rod a little bit to compensate for that. But it all just depends. Uh, so there we go. Neck relief is set. So um, whatever you need to do now to the guitar, you know that uh, you know if there's anything that's out of whack, you know that the truss rod is not what's causing it. It's something else. So the next thing that I will do is set the string height. Now, all of the companies that make guitars will uh, give you the suggested spec for a setup, um, but they're all kind of the same, and I kind of know where I like guitars to be. Uh, and some guitars will let you go a little lower on the action than others. It really comes down to how well the fretwork was done. Um, so you could typically higher end guitars uh, will let you go a little lower on the action. Um, the action meaning how high the string is off the fret. All right, so there's a way to measure this and you need a special tool. And that would be the Stuart McDonald, which is a company name that you're gonna hear a lot in this video. I'll link below all the stuff I'm using. This is a Stumac string action gauge. String action gauge. This thing is super useful. Uh, it's useful because you can measure in 64ths of an inch uh, which uh, is what I measure uh, string height in. So to take measure the string height, I suspect this is gonna be just about right. You measure it just the, with the guitar tuned to pitch, 
neck relief is set. You have to set neck relief first before you do this, or you should. Uh, and then you measure under the 12th fret. This is actually set pretty low. So the low E, I typically will like to see uh, 4 64ths of an inch. I know that's 2 30 seconds. Uh, I know how that works. Or 1 16th? Yes. <laughs> but 4 64ths on the low E. This is sitting right at between 2 and 3. Uh, so this is pretty low action on this guitar. But I did notice when I was playing it earlier on the upper frets. See how that's choking out? The action's too low. Which makes sense. It's really low. It's set at like... 364, 264s. Um, so the low E, you can go four to five 64s. The high E between three and four. And it's sitting right under four. It's ringing out. So I might not change the high E much, uh, but the low E is gonna come up. So pull out the tool kit that they gave you. The second Allen wrench is typically the uh, for, for adjusting the saddles. Now, um, if you don't have this, you can think of it this way. If a guitar was made in the United States, uh, it's going to, or in maybe England, it's gonna typically use the Imperial uh, you know, set of Allen keys. If it's made anywhere else in the world, which this one is made in China, crafted in China, you're using metric stuff. So uh, that's what you want. So to adjust these is real simple. This Allen, you know, wrench just fits right in here and you just tighten it and it raises the string up a little bit. So I'm just going to raise this string a little bit. I will often do this while the string is under tension. Um, you know, you might not want to do it that way. You might want to loosen the strings a little bit to raise them. But if you're not making huge adjustments, uh, I will do it under tension. If you raise the string, it will make it sharp. It's almost a full over half step sharper. So tune it back to pitch, and then check the string height. That is right at, like, right under four. I might come even a little higher. Um, I'm really impressed with this. Uh, a sign of a well-made guitar is how well it, how easily and how well you can set it up. So far, so good. All right, so here we are, right at four. I'm not gonna, you know, bore you with the rest of these, but I'm gonna adjust all of the strings sort of accordingly so they're at the same height uh, all the way through. Okay, so I've got them all adjusted. We went from 464s on the low E to right under 464s on the high E, and uh, you can just play it. I don't hear this thing choking out anyway. Remember the low E was fretting out on these low strings. That was me because I didn't fret it very well. It's ringing true. All of the strings are ringing true all the way up and down the fretboard. It made sense that the string action got a little lower because I did tighten the truss rod just a bit. Tightening your truss rod, again, takes relief out of the neck. So if you think about it, it's gonna make the strings come down a little closer to uh, the frets. But right now, um, once you do truss rod, a neck relief adjustment, and string height, your guitar is going to play really good, assuming it's just even halfway decently made. It will set up pretty well. The next thing that you're going to do is uh, basically two more steps in the basic setup process. Uh, intonation, which is has to do with these saddles and these screws in the back, and then pickup height, which I can tell this one's off. Uh, so the first thing we'll do here is intonation. So to check intonation, you... Uh, you tune the string open, that's dead on E, and then you fret it on the 12th fret, it's a little flat. Well, there we go. And you want the guitar to be in tune. Actually, it's right on. So you want the guitar to be in tune both places. I can maybe raise that string just a bit. It's kind of getting a little fret. But you know, you don't really typically play your low E that high, so I think we're okay. Um, then you just go all the way through. This one's right on too. Man, Squire. I don't know, so I got this from Z Zounds. <laughs> so I need to find out whether, I'm gonna ask Z Zounds, cause I, I, was, uh, I have a person there that I can ask. Um, 
whether they do the setup on these guitars or if this came from Squire. This is good. This setup is done right. All right, so props to Squire and or z -Zounds. This thing is perfectly intonated all the way. It's a couple things when it comes to intonation. Uh, one thing that you can see is referred to as roughing it in. So you'll typically see a stair step and another stair step. So the low E to the A to the D stair steps up. You'll, you'll almost always see this unless uh, you've got like a compensated nut or something, but you got a stair step up and then it drops down and another stair step up. So if you don't see this sort of a pattern on your guitar, uh, you should probably check intonation. I have had guitars where this, this stair steppy thing wasn't there and it was intonated fine. Um, so you just, you know, it's best to use your tools and use your ears. The next thing that we're gonna do is pickup height. Uh, this one I can tell is a little off. So the way you adjust pickup height, and this is certainly a preferential thing, uh, but you know, different players like different things, but I kind of shoot for, again, four sixty-fourths of an inch. That's a good, everything kind of, not everything, but a lot of things fall in that measurement um, when you're doing these setups. So to do this, you press the strings down on the last fret and you measure from the top of the, of the string to the pickup, and this thing is at like eight sixty-fourths of an inch. On the bridge, it is at eight. It's eight pretty much all the way. So these uh, pickups are, uh, it's like six on the, uh, on, the, on the high E, pretty much all the way across the board. So I'm gonna raise the pickups up quite a bit. So to raise the pickups up, each these pickups all have screws right here, and there are springs under these screws. So if you tighten the screws, pickups come up. So again, I want four sixty fourths, uh, or maybe five on the low E and four on the high. So we're down. We <laughs> I went a little too far. Flew a little too close to the sun there on the high E string. Four and five. That's good. And then see these are. Uh, these pickups are sort of staggered um, underneath the other strings, so they sort of compensate for some of the strings have, you know, they'll kind of ring louder, I guess. Um, some pickups are built that way, some aren't. All right, middle pickup, same story. Now on strats, a lot of times, pe players will um, sort of experiment with, with pickup heights on the middle pickup. A lot of times you'll see the middle pickup or even the neck pickup a lot further away from the strings. Uh, you, you can just get different sounds doing that, um, especially in your two and four positions, so you can experiment with that. So there we go, that's about right. Uh, now the low, uh, the bridge pickup, gosh, it was way low. I could tell right away when I got this thing, these these were low. There we go, 564s, that's fine. Around four or five. There we go, pickup height, set. So now when I play this, it should sound a, a bit different than if you saw the un, if you saw the unboxing video. Uh, this sounded a little weak to me, which made sense because these pickups were sunk so down so low. Okay, so that completes basically the basic setup you can do with any guitar that you get: neck relief, string height, intonation, pickup height. So the next thing I want to do is float this bridge. Maybe you can see it on Skycam. If I can hold it just right. <laughs> the bridge is uh, resting against the body. Uh, you can certainly do it that way. It requires a little more force on the tremolo to you know pull the bridge up. I like to set the bridge so it floats um, and that lets you pull it back. You can you can use the tremolo to, to make the strings go sharp or flat. All that depends on uh, how much pressure is on this claw arm right here. So there's a few things I wanna do here. First thing is um, I like the springs. To, I don't know why people, if there's people that do this, I feel like you get more even tension if this string is on that you know, hook and this one is on this one. So they're straight up and down. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna loosen this claw arm and it's just kind of a give and take. So you loosen it until the bridge comes up once the bridge comes up, though, the tension on the strings changes, and so they go flat, and then you t tighten the strings back up, and then they it'll pull a little more. So, in my experience, when a uh, when a when a bridge like this is on the deck, like resting on the body, you loosen the claw arm screws until the bridge just barely starts to lift off the body 
in which case your strings are gonna go flat and as you tighten those strings back up, tune them up to pitch, it'll pull the bridge a little more and you'll be about, about perfect. Uh, and it's really a feel thing, this is a preference thing. Um, tuning stability will change a little bit. So if you float your bridge and you notice that like the tuning stability isn't as good, you might just want to go back to, uh, you know, having the bridge, having the bridge rest against the body. Uh, but it's certainly a preference thing. So to do this, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. Which one has magically appeared? Look, I used to, I lived in uh, Oklahoma for a while. And we had a store there called Atwoods. This is where this one came from. I like these because you got flathead and Phillips head all on the same driver. All right, I am going to loosen these up. They are pretty tight. I'm gonna see if I can move these springs onto these other. This can be this can be difficult to do sometimes, depending on how hard you have to pull on them. There's one. All right, so what I'm gonna to resort to is loosening this way up so it takes a lot of tension off of that spring so I can pull it. It's kind of stuck. Almost got it. There we go, got it. And now it's on the other one. Okay, so now I'm probably a little loose on this thing. So we're tuned back to pitch and you can see here, maybe Skycam will show you, there is a little bit of, uh, of distance between the bridge and the body. So I might want just a little bit more. So I'm gonna loosen this just a tiny bit more. All right, I lost Skycam there for a second due to a depleted battery pack, uh, but we're back with a charged battery. Okay, you good up there? All right. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Maybe Skycam can see this. Focus, Canon, focus, there it is. So you can see a little bit of, uh, of, distance between, I'll take a picture and show you, that'd be easier. You see a little bit of distance between the bridge and the body. And uh, that's about where I want it. So again, how we did that was we loosened these screws back here on this claw arm. Uh, and you wanna make sure that they're loosened about the same uh, distance. You don't want like, you know, this side off, you know, further away than the other side. You want everything to be about even. And I, again, I move these springs so that they're even. So that completes the basic setup of any Strat style guitar, including adjusting the tremolo. I noticed that uh, this guitar, when I used the tremolo, um, initially, when I initially unboxed it, if I used the tremolo at all, it went out of tune. Uh, so that can be a number of things. That can be the nut, it's probably the nut. It can be... Um, Probably not anything to do with the bridge. It's probably the nut or the tuners. Okay, here's where things are going to get interesting. We're going to uh, round all these fret ends over, make them super smooth and glassy. I'm going to oil the fretboard and condition it. I'm going to polish the frets and, uh, and maybe roll the edges of this fretboard just a little bit more. Many of you have asked how I do this. I am not. Uh, a pro at this. I'm just gonna show you what I do. I don't do work that I would charge anybody for, <laughs> but I like how it, uh, I like the result on my own guitar, so this is what I do. I'm gonna show you and how, and the tools that I use to do it as well. All right, the first tool I recommend for this job is a string winder. This is the Ernie Ball Power Peg Pro. If you're gonna do any amount of string changing in your life, you need one of these. Oh my goodness, makes life easy. Okay, strings are off the guitar. When it comes to doing fret work, uh, as with many things, having the right tool is very important. So I have three different files that I bought from Stuart McDonald. This is the, uh, this one's labeled 1602. It is a, uh, basically it looks like a triangle um, and the edges of the triangle don't have a file on them, so you can rest the edge and it won't like chew up the material. Uh, I find this really useful. This does a lot of damage in one stroke. <laughs> this is a smaller one. This is actually the one I use the most. This is the 1175. This one and the next one I'll show you. Stuart McDonald 1175. It's just a small uh, file with sort of a rounded edge 
on the front. And then I use this a lot as well. This is a 1704. And uh, as you can see, um, it has sort of a concave edge in it that you can use to do that, which you can see can be very beneficial. So I'm just gonna show you one fret uh, and then you can imagine we're gonna do that with the rest of them. So I have a camera set up so you can kind of get a close view. I'm just gonna start on, oh, let's just do the 12th fret here. The edges of these frets are sharp. They're not sticking out, but they're sharp. Um, so when you do this, you want to sort of round over the edges. So they kind of have these, you know, rounded, smooth, polished, round all the way around. Um, people who are really good at this, the edge of the fret almost looks like a drop of water just like perfectly rounded over. Shelton guitars have some of the best fret work I've ever seen in my life. He does killer work. His guitars feel so good. Basically, I'm chasing, I'm chasing the Shelton thing here. To do that, you can take any of these files. Like I said, I like to use this, this small file and you kind of do, the motion that you're gonna do is you're gonna go, you're gonna kind of go forward and over. So you're making a round like this. So to do that, you kind of, you kind of just do this, okay? Now I have learned as an amateur at this, not a pro, that I will often uh, kind of cut into the wood every once in a while. And even on some high-end guitars where you can tell there's a lot of hand work done on these frets, You'll see that uh, another Jennings. Jennings has like crazy good fret work. Chad does an incredible job on his guitars. Um, so one thing to note, uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Um, it's gonna look uh, a little bit rough in the beginning because you think about it like you're just, let me see if I can show you this fret end here, sky cam. You can see it's a little, it's a little rough uh, where you do this, but you're gonna come through this and polish it up with, with these uh, polishing erasers that I'll show you here in a bit. So you get one side done, and a, one easy way to do this is do like you know the 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 guitar basically side of all the frets uh, on this side, and then you can come at it from another angle and get the other side as well. So anyway, here's the twelfth fret. Then you can do the other side, like this. And it's really just, you kind of finesse it. And then you can sort of do this. You can already see, I can see it in the light that it's like, it's kind of rounded over on both sides. So after you've kind of rounded the fret, you can take this concave uh, file Concave, is that the right word? Yes, convex would be coming out. Okay, and then you can just kind of do this. And that'll just really smooth it. And the uh, the sort of the ridges on this file where it would sit against, you know, the board, they don't actually cut. So you're not really cutting. Although um, it doesn't sound very nice, I'm being pretty gentle with this uh, as I move it. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of letting the file do the work. And then, as you can see, that is like a beautifully rounded over fret there. Let's see if I can show you right there on the 12th. See if the, the sky cam will show it to you. Um, but it looks really nice. I'll take a photo of this after I'm done to show you. And once I really polish that over, it's gonna look really, really smooth and it's gonna feel really glassy and nice. So. Um, so yeah, we'll just do the rest of them like that. It's just busy work. That's all it really is. All right, we're in the home stretch. Uh, I've got all of the fret ends. Oh, it feels so much better. Like rounded and smoothed over, filed over uh, into nice little smooth round ball ends. But it looks a little bit rough at this point. And uh, the next step is where we're gonna really uh, bring this thing home. We're gonna polish the frets uh, and sort of round over the fingerboard all at the same time. And to do that, I'm gonna use these. These are 
Fret erasers by Stumac. Skycam can document this. They look like erasers that you would use in school, but they are uh, increasing grit of sandpaper, basically. So I've long worn the numbers off, so I tried to <laughs> draw them. This is 220 grit. Then I think around 400, then I think 800. I don't know, there's no marking on this. Then you go to like 1200, then 2000, I think there's a 4000 somewhere, and then 8000. So um, I, whenever I do the, the fret ends like this, I start with the 200 grit. And on a, on a rosewood board, you can get away with this. On a finished maple board, you can't as much. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like rosewood so much, but you can just go, you know, you just take this thing and just on an angle, just like an eraser. And this is, this is sandpaper, so it's basically just sanding off. It's rolling the fretboard. Now there is some finish on this, uh, on this guitar. The finish kind of comes up to the edge of the fretboard, so you're gonna work a little bit of that off. In my opinion, I would prefer that um, to get this rolled feel and to get the edges of the frets just super smooth. This will get them like, you know, they'll feel like so smooth when you rub your hand up and down the very glassy, uh, very buttery feel on the fretboard. So there you go, you start with 220, do one side, do the other side, same deal. Like I said, you are in the process of doing this, you're also sort of rolling over the edge of your fretboard. You're gonna kind of make a mess. Uh, you get the, the little, it's like an eraser in that sense that it's like you get the little, you know, the little shaving bits. Uh, and then on these frets, uh, I'm gonna do the tops of them as well. And I just do it like this. Like I said, rosewood board, uh, if you kind of go over the tops of the frets like this, you're not actually, you don't wanna like sandpaper your board. Uh, but rosewood um, is an unfinished, you know, board on the top. So you're not really gonna hurt it. Uh, but I'm just hitting the frets. And this is gonna polish these frets and make them super, super smooth. So when you bend on them or something, or just play on them, your strings, it feels like they're sliding on like glass, which is, uh, it's a good feeling. It's not what these felt like stock factory. This is gonna make a huge difference. So basically you just do this with each increasing uh, grit of a fret eraser, sandpaper, more or less. So again, I'm not going to, uh, show me doing this with each one of these things, but we'll just go up, you know, increasing in grit. All right, the sanding slash polishing is done, and these frets feel really good. Uh, as good as any guitar that's in the room here, which are, just put a D chord and strum strings that weren't even there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, so the next thing that I would do here, the last step before I put new strings on it, try it out, is to condition the fretboard. This fretboard looks a little dry. I don't know if it really is or not. And this oiling your fretboard, conditioning your fretboard is not really something you need to do often, maybe once a year or so. Uh, and this is how I like to do it. I know steel wool is, uh, and oil both are like hotly debated things in the guitar setup world. Uh, I use steel wool for this process and I actually put the oil into the steel wool so you don't get a bunch of fibers like finding their way into your pickups, which would not be good. And I can't even tell you what kind of oil this is. As you can see, uh, the the, the uh, branding is, is gone. It's been rubbed off. I've had this for years. It was, I think, given to me or recommended to me by a guitar setup tech friend. I can't even remember. It's been so long ago. This is fretboard conditioning oil. I don't even know what it is. Uh, you can do a Google search, do your own research about what the best oil is for this application. But what I do is, uh, hopefully I don't get it on my clothes. <laughs> I put uh, some oil. You can just do this in a on a, a towel, of course, as well, but if you do it in steel wool, it's gonna kind of polish your fretboard. You would not wanna do this uh, with maple uh, finished board, only with open grain woods like rosewood. So, or whatever this wood, rosewood-ish wood is. 
Uh, and then uh, you just kind of work it in. And I like to rub a little bit because it's going to, you know, well, first thing we can do is just kind of distribute the oil on the board. Uh, we're putting on way more oil than we need. We're going to wipe this off here in just a bit. Um, so put the oil on the board all the way up and down the neck. Now you could have taken the neck off for all of this uh, fret and neck, you know, fretboard work that we're doing here. Um, I left it on. So I'm kind of, I'm working it in. I'm, I'm, this will clean your fretboard as well. Uh, this steel wool will clean and polish it and get the get the goop out of it. The other thing this will do, this steel wool, this is either 3 or 4 O aught wool, steel wool, extremely fine stuff. This will kind of do a final polish on top of your frets as well. And now that we're done, you want to wipe off the excess oil off of the fretboard. And then once this dries, it's going to go back right after you do it. It looks, it always makes your, uh, it's like when you polish, uh, you know, wood or anything like that. It always looks really, really good right afterward. Um, it's going to dry and kind of go back to a little lighter shade. Uh, but it does make it look much nicer and richer. Let me wipe my fingers off here. Uh, than before you polished it. Look at that. That looks good, doesn't it? Let me show you here. Get it in the in the light there. That looks really nice. So we're done. This fretboard, I mean, this could be on a $3,000 guitar and it would feel right at home. If you go to the work to do this, it's gonna make a huge difference in the way your guitars feel and in the way that they play. Uh, it just makes, it makes them feel very luxurious, very nice. So the next step is put on a new set of strings and see if the setup still holds because these things kind of need to settle in. You need to maybe give them a day and come back and check that neck relief again. Uh, check your intonation, make sure the string height is all good. But at this point, we're pretty much done. Let's put some new strings on. So I put new strings on it. We're done. By the way, strings of choice these days, Diadario XT. Uh, I like 10s, 10 to 46. So I've been using these for electric guitar. I like them. I've been using the acoustic version of these as well, the XT Acoustic Strings Phosphor Bronze. I've been really uh, liking these strings a lot lately. Strings are personal, whatever you like. I checked my work, everything is pretty much the same. One thing I did was when I put these strings on, I was like, I had floated this bridge a little too high. So um, I, I tightened the screws back here and brought the, uh, the bridge down just a little bit. Um, It feels really, really good. The neck feels great and, uh, you know, just moving strings across the frets feels really nice. One thing I've noticed about this, uh, this Squire, uh, if you have one of these Squires, maybe you can chime in and let me know. I'm, I've got it in tune. Anytime I use the tremolo, things don't stay in tune very well. Uh, I'm noticing strings are coming back sharp, which tells me um, I suspect when you loosen the string, it's sliding this way through the nut and then it's catching. So when it comes back, it pulls back sharp. Um, so what I would probably do to fix that is put some sort of a lubricant here in the, uh, in the nut slots, which is a very common thing to do. There's a lot of products out there. People will use different materials. See, I'm all sharp everywhere. Um, <laughs> or you could you could uh, put a, a new nut, something higher quality, like a tusk nut or you know a bone nut. So I wanted to make a quick update to this setup video. So after I got done with all of the setup work and the fret work that I did, this guitar still would not stay in tune, and I suspected it was the nut, and I was right. Uh, but I did make an assumption that was incorrect on these Squire Classic Vibe guitars. I assumed this was a plastic nut. Typically when you buy a budget level instrument, that's one of the places where they save costs. But I did some research and found out that Squire is actually putting bone nuts on these guitars, which is a nice upgrade, but it still wasn't staying in tune. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to uh, 
I'm gonna try sanding the nut slot and putting a little lubricant in there in the form of graphite from a pencil because that's what I had uh, available to me. I actually bought uh, a Tusk XL uh, nut for a, a Strat style guitar, which I would recommend these if you're looking to upgrade uh, a nut on an instrument on one of your guitars. These are self lubricating, so they are, um, they're great for guitars with tremolos. Uh, you don't need to sand them or lubricate them or anything like that. They work really well. Tusk nuts, this thing was like, it wasn't very much money. It was about 10 bucks. So uh, I haven't actually put it on because I've had good luck with this one. And the way I did that is I used some sandpaper. So I actually, in my drawer of sandpaper in the garage, I have uh, some really fine grit stuff. And I had like some uh, 2000 grit sandpaper. And I thought this was one of those because it was the same color. It turns out this is a, a piece of 1000 grit wet dry sandpaper. So this is what I used. I would probably go with 2000 grit if I were you. And all I did was I just folded it over, uh, removed the strings, and just uh, basically sanded the nut slots. Now you don't wanna take material out of there, especially if your guitar is set up well. You don't wanna make these slots deeper than they are, unless that's your intention. Really what I was trying to do is just get rid of any burrs or anything that might have been rough in these slots because that's what was happening. If I, while I was engaging the tremolo, the string was sliding through the slot and then it was catching on its way back, which was pulling it sharp. So it was really, it only took me about 90 seconds, you know, to kind of uh, sand in these slots. And then I took a, uh, just a regular pencil and uh, pencil lead is graphite and I just kind of colored in. Uh, if you look close, you probably can't see it from there. You can see that, uh, you know, there's some, some gray on these slots and that will act as a lubricant to let the string move freely in the slot. And uh, after that, I have had no tuning issues at all. So you can, I mean, I can really, let's see if I can dive bomb it, if it'll stay in tune. That is impressive. So even if you have a budget level instrument, if the bones of it are well made, uh, you can maintain it so that it will stay in tune with heavy tremolo usage. Uh, at this point, there are zero playability issues with this guitar. And again, have not added anything to it or removed anything from it, just give it a little bit of TLC. All right, back to the video. Another thing I noticed about this guitar is all these tuners feel really good, except this, the high E tuner. It's like every once in a while you turn it and nothing happens. And then you feel it catch. So um, they're probably not like the highest end tuners you've ever seen. They are vintage style, which uh, is my preference. Yeah, so I think a tuner upgrade would be a worthy upgrade on these guitars, a nut upgrade would be good. Of course, pickups, and there are a million different options out there. With this guitar, we're gonna put triple shots from Lambertone's pickups in. And, uh, you know, if you really wanted to go crazy, you could put a new bridge assembly in here. Um, you know, you'd have higher quality saddles. Anything the string touches makes a difference uh, in the tone, a big difference. So, you know, the saddles, the nut, uh, and the quality of that stuff will make a difference in just the overall playing experience of the guitar. But the, uh, the way the guitar sort of plays and feels much improved from where it was when it came in the mail to me this morning. And uh, really these are things that anyone can learn how to do and do, especially the basics, the, the neck relief, the string height, the pickup height, and the intonation. If you wanna go for uh, doing the fret work like I've done, Again, a disclaimer, I am no professional. I would not uh, say, hey, yeah, send your guitar to me and uh, charge you some money to do this. Uh, I would feel nervous using fret files on somebody else's guitar. And if you wanna jump into the waters with that, uh, first get the, get the right tools and then practice on a guitar that's not just precious to you. Uh, because if you mess up, then you mess up. You're gonna need an, either like a new fret, you know, fret work by a pro, uh, or you might damage the wood on the neck, which once, once it's gone, it's gone. So, um, word to the wise, but I'm very happy with the way 
this came out. You'll be seeing this in a lot more videos as we uh, first demo. We're just going to demo it in its current form, kind of let the strings settle in and uh, let you hear our final thoughts on it as a stock guitar. And after that, we're going to put all kinds of good stuff into this and see uh, how far can you take a Squire classic vibe. 60s strats. Subscribe below to follow along on this guitarist journey. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.